Today, we're taking communion and welcoming our online viewers to partake with us by having their own bread and cup. Well, many of God's people, including me, are going through hardship and difficulty in these last days as they wear on. But do not despair. The Lord knows about it. He cares, and he will answer our prayers. We'll talk about how to stick with God in hard times. In today's message, Need Help? God is Coming, from Psalm 6, verses 1 to 10. Let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Oh, Lord God, we thank you so much for this chance to be able to come before you. We ask you for your help in this message today, that you will send the Holy Spirit to apply it to each and every heart, mind, and life. Oh, Lord God, we pray that we will be stronger with you and each other as we come out of this message, applying it all the more. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Remember that the Psalms are the hymn book of the Bible, 150 songs to be able to sing. Aren't they wonderful? And if you go to the ancient Hebrew version, the Old Testament, you'll be able to see what they call the diacritical marks, those marks that indicate how they are to be chanted or sung. The directions here are to the chief musician with stringed instruments on an eight-stringed harp, a Psalm of David. David was the first king who ruled both Judah and Israel. He wasn't of any noble line, but was selected by the prophet Samuel to succeed the failing King Saul. David's father, Jesse, had several sons and didn't even bother to bring in his youngest from shepherding when the prophet came. However, Samuel knew none of the other boys were the right one, so he had Jesse bring in David, and the prophet anointed him immediately. David then achieved great fame by killing Goliath when Saul had been too afraid to take on the blaspheming giant of the Philistines. Saul was a handsome, strong, tall man, but he was afraid of the people. He wouldn't restrain them when Samuel took longer than expected to come to a meeting. Instead of slaughtering all the enemy and their animals, Saul kept back some when he took it upon himself to perform Samuel's spiritual rites. Samuel told Saul that day the kingdom would be taken from him. It was eventually. But David had to wait and was chased all over the Holy Land by King Saul in his fear of losing his position. Finally, Saul died in battle as a suicide rather than fall to his opponents, and David became king. But that doesn't mean that David then had it easy. His son Absalom rebelled against him and chased him out of the palace. His affair with Bathsheba cost him another son and blessing from God. And his liaisons were noticed by his son Solomon who took 1,000 wives and concubines, and they led him away from the side of the Lord God. Psalm 6 recounts some of David's difficulties, but also celebrates triumph. Verse 1 says, O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure. God does have fury, and he exercises it on people at times. He was angry at David's son for raping his sister Tamar, for example. He drowned the Egyptian army as it pursued the Jews into the Red Sea. And he will send to hell all those who have refused his offer of salvation. For they have said, we will live as we want. And we do not so much as believe there is a God to whom we must give account. Don't count his patience as weakness or tacit approval, however. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 2 Peter 3.9 says, God doesn't want to send anyone to hell, but he will. If you're a born-again Christian, then don't despair when the Lord corrects you. Recall Hebrews 12.5 and 6. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you're rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chases and scourges every son whom he receives. None of us is perfect. All of us will be corrected at one time or another. One of the reasons our society is falling apart is parents think they should be their children's best friends or enablers instead of spanking their bottoms or grounding them when they misbehave. Young people not given boundaries at home, school, or work will try to make their own, and those will be selfish and destructive to others as well as self. Psalm 6, verses 2 and 3. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. O oh Lord, heal me, for my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled. But you, O oh Lord, how long? Hmm. David in the Psalms is very honest, transparent. He often discusses his difficulties and prayers to God for help. 
David had to live in caves, take refuge with unsavory characters, and constantly be on the move for years. He even went over to the Philistines he'd once defeated, as recounted in 1 Samuel 21, verses 11 to 15. The servants of Achish said to him, Is this not David, the king of the land? Did they not sing of him to one another in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? Now David took these words to heart, and was very much afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. So he changed his behavior before him, pretending madness in their hands, scratched on the doors of the gate, and let his saliva fall down on his beard. Then Achish said to his servants, Look, you see, the man is insane. Why have you brought him to me? Have I need of madmen, that you have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? <laughs> well, rather embarrassing for the man who slew Goliath. David here asks, how long? Is there any Christian who hasn't posed the same question of God? We have to realize the Lord looks at the full span of time. And as 2 Peter 3.8 says, With the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and one thousand years as one day. He's working all of our adversity together for good, and we will eventually see how. Psalm 6, verses 4 and 5. Return, O Lord, deliver me. O save me for your mercy's sake. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In the grave, who will give you thanks? David often reasons with God. Here he says, if you don't help me, I'll die, and I won't be able to give you glory anymore. One of our common mistakes when we go through a hard time for some years is thinking that God's against us. He is not. He always is for us. However, the world and devil are against us, and they battle with the Lord. Remember what the angel appearing in Daniel 10, 12 to 13 tells him. Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. In the difficult seasons, we need to encourage ourselves in the Lord, recalling the many times he's come through for us and used us in his work. Think of Roman Catholic Saint Padre Pio. He was greatly dedicated to God, but the Vatican didn't like him and wouldn't let him preach for ten years. Finally, the Pope relented, and Pio became known as the miracle-working saint with gifts of healing, words of knowledge, and much wisdom. The hardships are turned around for our good, and our endurance will become reward, for we all reap what we sow. Psalm 6, verses 6 and 7. I'm weary with my groaning. All night I make my bed swim. I drench my couch with my tears. My eye wastes away because of grief. It grows old because of all my enemies. David talks here of his crying, sweating, agonizing. He stays up till the wee hours of the morning, his eyes tired and poor. I had terrible itching for a couple of years at night. Sometimes it took four or five hours to get to sleep. A lack of such rest stays with us all day long. Finally, a doctor determined my itching came from an interaction effect of medications, and he resolved the problem. But I've had times earlier in my walk with the Lord when anxiousness plagued me at night. If you get into that situation, then pray for God to let your mind be stayed on him, trusting in him, so that you will be in perfect peace, as Isaiah 26.3 promises. Psalm 6, verses 8 and 9. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. <laughs> Stay with God and he will come through. I don't know who is getting discouraged today and needs this, but I promise you on the Holy Bible, the Lord will answer you and you will know what he has. Faith isn't real until it's tested. If we never had to face any difficulty, all the answers instantly appeared before us and we were devoid of suffering, then we couldn't minister to a world that is hurting so badly and doesn't know Christ. We also wouldn't understand that there's a real God and a real devil, and they are really at war. Until we face off with Satan's minions, the conflict isn't a reality in our minds and hearts. Sometimes our prayers seem to hit the ceiling and bounce back. Have you ever prayed for something over and over again and wondered if it would ever come to pass? But it did, or it will. And I pray that God would settle it in your spirit now that he's your view. Don't ever think that the Lord doesn't care. He does. 
I've endured a lot of discrimination for my faith, but I don't blame God. I blame the devil. The Lord allows trouble in our lives both to give us empathy and answers for others. Also, it may be to show us that we need to shift our priorities. Maybe for a season we're isolated and get caught up in self. Perhaps we get a good job and start buying a lot of stuff, and that makes us feel good. We may get mad at a preacher, teacher, deacon, or other person at church and stay away a while, drifting from God. The Lord will bring us back to the right path and bless us besides. And our final verse of our focus passage today, Psalm 6, verse 10. Let all my enemies be ashamed and greatly troubled. Let them turn back and be ashamed suddenly. David sometimes takes heed for what theologians call imprecatory prayers. That is, petitions of the Lord to do something bad to an enemy. If we're praying for someone to go to hell, then yes, we've gone overboard. We need to pray that he or she be saved. However, what David prays here is fine. He's saying, Lord God, as you answer me, let those who hurt me be convicted and seek answers. Galatians 6 verses 7 and 8 says, essentially, what goes around comes around. Having a negative consequence to bad behavior is good. It tells people to stop doing what's wrong and start doing right, especially what's right in God's eyes. A lot of Christians are going through hard times. I'm one of them. But the Lord will come through, and we will be rescued. The rapture will be soon, and if we perish before that, then our personal rapture will be first. Either way, we'll get from here to eternity in a moment in time, and we'll never have to be around sin, sanctimony, or selfishness ever again. We have six takeaways today from our message, points I want you to think about, pray about, and put into action. Number one, God has a calling in our lives, a great purpose for us, but it usually isn't fulfilled until we go through hardships. God has a calling in our lives, a great purpose for us, but it usually isn't fulfilled until we go through hardships. David was anointed as king as a teenager, but he had to endure spears and suffering from Saul, as well as other difficulties before he could take the throne. When David became king, he united the Jews and cast the name of Jehovah far and wide. Takeaway two, if we belong to God, then like a good earthly father, he will correct us. If we belong to God, then like a good earthly father, he will correct us. Hebrews 12 tells us if he never rebukes us, we're not his. The only person the Lord didn't rebuke was Jesus. And why? He was perfect and knew he had to be about his father's business. Number three, we all make mistakes, and we may reap trouble from them. However, God will work them together for good. We all make mistakes, and we may reap trouble from them. However, God will work them together for good. David neglected his children some. One rebelled against him and chased him from the palace. God restored David to his rightful throne. Another emulated his affairs and sexual misdeeds. However, that same son governed the Jews at the height of their earthly kingdom. Number four, refuse to believe God has turned his back on you, even if you keep waiting for your prayers to be answered. Refuse to believe God has turned his back on you, even if you keep waiting for your prayers to be answered. Here in Psalm 6, in just 10 verses, David goes from crying out, How long, O Lord, full of tears, worry, and strife, to receiving an answer to his prayers. And what does Jesus say in John 16, verses 21 and 22? A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she's given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. Amen, O oh Lord. Amen. Number five, remember that there's both a real God and real devil, and they really fight over us. Remember that there's both a real God and real devil, and they really fight over us. <laughs> if the answer to the prophet Daniel's prayer was delayed three weeks by demonic forces, then ours may be too. Let me assure you, however, God will answer in time. And finally, number six, the Bible tells us that in the end times, there will be greater persecution of Jesus' followers. We must endure well, and soon we'll head to heaven by rapture or death. The Bible tells us that in the end times, there will be greater persecution of Jesus' followers. We must endure well, and soon we'll head to heaven by rapture or by death. Dying is our personal rapture, but the corporal one is coming any moment. All has been fulfilled for it to happen. 
we see the vast confusion, delusion, and collusion of our day. There's no reason we should sacrifice anything in eternity to get more of this. My friend, you are responsible for your salvation, not your mother, father, sister, brother, teacher, or anyone else. I'm going to give you the chance to be saved, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But first, I want to tell you the truth through a great old black gospel song we sing in the Church of God in Christ called Nobody's Fault But Mine. Nobody's fault but mine. Nobody's fault but mine. If I die, I'm so be lost. Nobody's fault but mine. Nobody's fault but mine. Nobody's fault but mine. If I die, my soul will be lost. Nobody's fault but mine. I got a Bible in my home. I got a Bible in my home. If I don't read it, my soul will be lost. Nobody's fault but mine. I know right from wrong. Oh, I know right from wrong. If I die, my soul be lost. Nobody's fault but mine. Sister taught me how to read. Sister taught me how to read. If I don't read, then my soul be lost. Nobody's fault but mine. Oh, nobody's fault but mine. Oh, nobody's fault but mine. If I die, my soul be lost. Nobody's fault but mine. Oh, nobody's fault but mine. Oh, nobody's fault but mine. Oh, if I die, my soul be lost. Nobody's fault but mine. Oh, nobody's fault but mine. Oh, nobody's fault but mine. A friend, and that's you. Nobody's fault but yours. But friend, you can play a part in your own salvation by accepting the grace that God is drawing you by now. No man come to Christ except he be drawn. We can't save ourselves, but we must say yes to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. There are but four essentials to salvation. First, repent of sin. Turn from it and ask God's forgiveness for what you've done wrong and you failed to do right. He will forgive you for Jesus' sake. Confess faith in Jesus Christ as the way, the truth, and the life. No way to the Father except by him. Believe Jesus Christ rose in body and in spirit that third day in the tomb. Our body and spirit must be resurrected, so his had to be as well. And follow Jesus as Lord and Savior. Friend, I haven't been perfect in 30 years with Christ, over 20 years as a preacher of the gospel ordained. I will still get to heaven because I'm trying to follow Jesus. I'm committed to him, and you will too. Jesus Christ doesn't grade on a curve. He grades on a pass-fail. Either you're with him, my friend, or you're not. I'm going to lead us in a prayer of repentance and faith. And if you believe what I'm saying, repeat after me. And this will be your prayer to enter the kingdom of God. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Father God, I repent of my sins. Please forgive me. I confess faith that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. I cannot come to you except by him. I believe Jesus Christ rose in body and spirit the third day of the tomb. And I will follow him as Lord and Savior, repenting should I fall. Come into my heart, Lord God, and save me. In Jesus' name, amen. Ha <laughs> ha, so be it. And it is. That's what I mean means. Oh, Fred, have you plugged in to the power source? Oh, why, my, my, what a wonderful life this is in Jesus Christ. Not easy, but it is good, and it ends great. <laughs> Heavenly and eternal rewards. Well, friend, once we're saved, what do we need to do? Well, first of all, be baptized in water. Be immersed, just like Jesus was. He didn't have any sins to wash away. You and I have. 
and they'll be gone under that old water. Read the Bible. Possess the land. You have nearly 7,500 promises in that old book. Make sure you possess them all. How do you possess them? By knowing them and praying them into existence. Friend, you can't will yourself to have the Holy Spirit, to have the fruit of it thereof, but by praying and seeking to follow God, knowing those promises from the Bible, they'll come to pass. Come to church. Come to church with us online, 5 p.m. Saturdays on Mountain Time, live, Facebook, Twitter, and the rest of our social media. We would love to be able to have you. And of course, if you miss any kind of uh, service, well, you can see it on our YouTube channel, Facebook, etc. Fellowshipping with other believers. Take some time to get to know the people of God. That's how we become a fighting force as well as friends in Christ and pursue personal relationship with Almighty God. Oh, friends, he knows all about you. He knows every cell of your body, every thought of your mind, every action you've ever taken, every word you've spoken. He loves you anyway. He loves me anyway. <laughs> Let's get to know him like he knows us. Now we want to go to communion. At Eternity Now, communion is open to anyone who's saved, having accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, and seeking to follow him as in the Bible. You do not have to be a member of this church to take communion. Take a moment in silence to commune with the Lord. If you have something against someone else, then forgive that person. Should you've been distant from God, ask him to draw you to himself. This bread represents the body of Christ. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for this body that was broken for us. We break this bread in remembrance of our Lord. Let us eat it to our spiritual strength. In the same way, we take the cup. This represents the blood of Christ that was shed so that our sins could be washed away. O oh Lord God and Father, we thank you so much for the blood of Jesus, the only completely pure blood in the history of the world. It was spilled for us sinners, us vile, us wicked, so that we could be cleansed and spend eternity with you and him. Thank you so much for the blood of Christ. Let us drink all. Thank you so much, Lord God, for giving us Jesus Christ. It hurt him, it hurt you. Oh, but it helped us. Thank you so much for making that bridge to us where there was a gap that could not be forded. We thank you, Lord God, that we have a connection with you through Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. We thank you so much for being with us today and being part of our broadcast talking about how God is coming. He's going to help us in our distress and trials and troubles, personally as well as corporately in the rapture. And also, we could have communion to be able to unite with God and each other. Remember, Eternity Now is an evangelism outreach and church headquartered in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, USA, and touching the world, over 140 countries. Head to EternityNow.com to see our statement of faith, ministry news, end of day's timeline, videos, podcasts, and much more. You can see the weekly message, Saturdays, 5 p.m. Mountain, live on Facebook.com slash Eternity Now Media, YouTube.com slash at Eternity Now, Twitter's at Kyle Huckins, and our LinkedIn as well. Our Revelation Bible study is Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Mountain, same pages and platforms. And by the way, the web addresses for our social media, as well as links to them, are on EternityNow.com. Our group is four years old, and it has reached over 9 million people for Christ. We want to hit 10 million this year, but we need your help. $25 a month now reaches 30000 for Christ in a year, one penny per soul. Go to EternityNow.com, E-T-E-R-N-I-T-Y-N-O-W dot C-O-M, and click Support Us to see more and give securely, or go directly to bit.ly slash reach a million. That's bit.ly, bit.ly slash reach a million. That links to our secure official PayPal donation site. You also can simply give via PayPal to info at eternitynow.com. I-N-F-O at E-T-E-R-N-I-T-Y-N-O-W dot C-O-M. We now take our time in prayer for not only this ministry, but also all around the world and you personally as you bring your prayer request to our attention.
Well, Father God, thank you so much for this time to be able to go over the scriptures, to pray together, to learn and to celebrate Christ. We thank you so much for communion. And Lord, we pray for integrity for our country and its government. We pray for everyone to be equally under the law. We pray for revival in Christian hearts and dedication to the Great Commission's evangelism, for conviction and correction of T, for healing for Michelle, Sarah, Hazen, Roger, also salvation for C. And we rejoice in Tomo's healing. Maranatha, Lord Jesus, Maranatha, Lord Jesus, come quickly. <laughs> and he is. And his reward, my friend, is with him. Thank you for being with us today. Contact me directly at khuckins, K-H-U-C-K-I-N-S, at eternitynow.com, E-T-E-R-N-I-T-Y-N-O-W dot C-O-M, or 806-463-8793. Again, USA 806-463-8793. May the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, and give you peace.